Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at animating your character with prop interaction. So we're going to do two scenarios in this tutorial. We're going to have our character riding a skateboard as well as swinging from a pole. And I'm going to show you how to animate those two uh, motions using the 2D motion key editor. Okay, so let's bring in our first uh, prop here. Let's go over here to props. And I've uh, downloaded a pack called the 3 G3 Accessory Fun Stuff Pack. You can purchase this from the content store. And in the entertainment folder, you'll find miscellaneous things like cameras, goggles, roller skates, and a skateboard. Even a shotgun's in there as well. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, click on our actor tab and bring in our character. And we'll go to character, G3, G3 humans, and bring in athletic Tim S2. So S2 indicating he's facing 90 degrees to the side here. All right, and we'll position him on the skateboard. We want his right foot to maintain position on the skateboard while his left foot will propel him, okay? So it doesn't matter that the left foot is a little lower than the skateboard or than the board right now because we're going to uh, have that hit the ground and propel him using the stretch bone, okay? So let's go ahead and go into the 2D motion key editor here. And the first thing we need to do is put our character into the initial position. So the initial position is going to be where he's preparing to, uh, you know, push off with the uh, with his left leg there. So if we take his left thigh and we try to rotate his left thigh like this, Notice that uh, it'll bend, and that's because we have the end effector on, and it'll automatically just uh, you know create that sort of smart IK um, chain reaction in the leg. If we want, we can just press reset and reset it back here. If we want to avoid that, what we need to do is we need to unlock the end effector here for the left leg. Okay, so just click on this lock, it'll become green, and then you can rotate it like this. Okay, rotate it straight out. And we're also going to take the hip, and we're going to rotate our character slightly back like this, Move the hip down as well a little bit, just to give him a bit more uh, uh, momentum there. And uh, a bit more balance, I guess. We'll bring this leg uh, forward like that, okay? He's going to take a big, huge sweep of the leg, just to propel himself forward. Okay, so the left leg is forward. That means we need to bring the right arm forward as well, okay? Just to balance out our animation. Right forearm, and rotate it like this. We're going to bring this a bit, a bit higher up as well. We're going to make it exaggerated. All right, and the left arm, uh, upper arm, we'll just select that here. That needs to be uh, back like this, and the forearm needs to be forward like this. Okay, maybe a little, uh, maybe a little bit too much. Okay, just like something like this. Okay, so this is our initial position, and from here we're going to go to a different frame. So I need to go to my timeline. You can also press the F3 hotkey, and we'll go to frame 10 for now, just to show this in uh, slower motion. Okay, in frame 10, we want our character to be basically in the neutral position almost. Okay, so let's just rotate him back like this. Let's bring that hip a little bit forward, uh, a little bit up like this. And uh, we'll take the left leg. This is the main one. We need to bring down like this, like a bus, and uh, the left uh, shank or uh, calf there. And you can see, even though we have it straight, it's not quite touching the ground. So what we need to do is we need to use the stretch bone. Okay, the stretch bone constraint. And the way we do that is by going up here, making sure constraints are active, and selecting stretch bone, or you can use the three hotkey right here. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is take my character's uh, foot here, and we'll just stretch it down. Zoop, you can see the legs stretch to the ground position there. Okay, and that's pretty good. And for the arms, we'll just bring the arms back into position like this, almost by the side. Okay, just like this, and. Uh, We'll also have to rotate that hip a little bit forward as well, just like this. Okay, and try and make it straight as possible. There we go. Okay, and <laughs> that looks a little bit weird with his left arm just kind of stretched out like that. So we'll bring this forward as well and uh, try and make it a bit straighter. Okay, so then we have an animation like this from this keyframe to this keyframe. Whoop. We're halfway through, and then the follow through at frame 20. We're going to have the left leg. We're going to rotate the hip first, okay, just like this. And we're going to take that uh, left thigh, bring it back like this, and left shank, rotate it back like this. We can even take the left foot and just kind of rotate it slightly back like that as well. Okay, and because the left foot is back, that means the right arm needs to be back, so we can select the right arm from the image here, since it's hidden behind our character right now, and like this. Okay, and kind of bend it back like that, and the left arm forward, and like this. A little bit, uh, just like that. 
Okay, so what we're going to have is something like this. Zoop. Okay, if we play back, not bad, but very, very linear and not dynamic at all. So we need to fix this, okay? Now let's go up to the very top of our timeline here and make sure that we have our motion track open. Again, all these tracks right here, you don't really need to worry about them. They're just the, the transform tracks indicated by the T for each individual bone, okay? So hip, uh, thigh, so on and so forth. The main absolute keys are up here in the transform track. When you click on motion, it'll open up a transform track. So what we're going to do first is we're going to uh, take uh, decrease the amount of time between frame one or the first and second keyframes here. And by clicking and dragging that first keyframe and maybe to about frame five. So we'll have something like this. So the first part will be really fast and then the second part will be really slow. Now, in order to uh, make it more dynamic and believable, the follow through, what we're going to do is we're actually going to right click on the last keyframe here and we're going to open up the transition curve. Okay, so now we have a bunch of options for transition curves. You can see we can click on them and blah, blah, like and then bounce, you know, gain momentum and whatever. The one I'm going to use for this case is damping. Okay, so damping, we have a very strong uh, motion at the beginning between the two keyframes. So between the fifth frame and the 20th frame here, we're going to have a very strong um, uh, increase in speed. And then it's going to kind of uh, peter off as it uh, dampens out there at the end. So then what we're going to have, if I play back, it'll look like this. Okay, and that looks a lot more like what we would expect uh, our character to look like if he's kind of pushing off with a skateboard. Okay, and all we need to do then is just kind of loop this stuff. So let's go ahead and take our second keyframe and uh, right click it and copy it. And we'll put him back into position here at maybe frame 30 and paste it. And then frame one, we'll do the same thing. Right click, copy that first keyframe. Maybe go to frame 40 or so and right click and paste it. So, whoop. and then he'll get back in uh, to position for his uh, second uh, push off there. Okay, so zoop. we can actually just uh, click the last keyframe here and uh, use a uh, damping for this as well. Or no, let's use the deceleration for this. Okay, so not as extreme as damping, more like this. Okay, and he'll get into more into position there. You can even just uh, take this keyframe up and move it a little bit forward. Okay. So then if we uh, take our project length uh, indicator here, a little uh, marker, and bring it forward on the timeline, do just something like this. We uh, have loop on, loop enabled right here. So we can play back. Okay, there he is, he's pushing off on the skateboard, ready to go. And we can also animate the skateboard since this is a, an animated prop, we can right click on the skateboard. Let's zoom in on the skateboard a little bit since it may be hard for some of you to see the animation. And we can right click it and just select Action menu and skateboard loop. Okay. And you can see the skateboard will move. If we go to the motion track, there's our clip for the skateboard. Uh, always make sure that you have um, object, object related track selected in general. I, I think it's very handy because whenever you select your character, it'll be basically bring up the character tracks. If you go ahead and select the skateboard again, it'll bring up the skateboard tracks. Just kind of easier for everyone involved. Okay. So what we're going to do here is, uh, from frame, uh, we're going to move our skateboard. We're going to link our character to the skateboard. And then move the skateboard forward when he uh, when he uh, takes off there. Okay, so to do that, let's go to the transform track of our skateboard and at frame. Uh, so right here, we're not moving, not moving, not moving until frame five, where he makes contact with the ground. We're going to double click in the transform track, and that's going to add a keyframe. Okay, and then maybe frame like fifteen or so, or whatever, we can have him, uh, you know, have the skateboard. Oops, not move forward yet. We need to link our character to the skateboard. Okay, so let's take our character. And let's go up to here and click on this and link. And then link the character to the skateboard. Okay. And then if we uh, select the skateboard, we can have the skateboard move forward a few frames and the character will then be linked to it. Okay. Maybe something like this. Let's go, go ahead and give that a practice shot. Whee, whoops. And the reason that uh, our character, the skateboard is going ahead of our character right now is because we linked our skateboard, we linked our character at the wrong frame. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we can fix this. We can just go ahead, select the character, and let's go to link. And you can see the link only starts at this frame. Okay, so what we want to do is we want the link to start at the very first frame. So we can go ahead and click that link, click that keyframe, and bring it forward all the way. And then, eee, there we go. We'll have our character uh, linked to the skateboard properly. Okay, so always be aware of the frame that you're linking at. Uh, otherwise, you may find a result like that where the skateboard takes off without you. Okay. So that's the first motion in a nutshell. Uh, it's a pretty cool and dynamic motion, really easy to do.
Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get a, start a new project here. We're going to do our next animation, which is having our character swing from a bar. So we need to find that bar. We can find a simple line just in the props under a basic icon. There's like a line here somewhere. There we go. Line 01. Let's just click and drag it in. Okay. We'll pretend this is some kind of gymnastics bar. And then let's bring in our actor again. Uh, sportsman side 2. Okay. So this guy's going to have uh, three separate motions again. Very simple. Again, a lot of these animations, if you use transition curves, can be done just using three simple keyframes. And the simpler your uh, your keyframe animation is, the easier it is to edit later on. Okay, so let's first start by bringing our character up, okay, using the motion key editor one more time. We're going to bring his arms up like this, okay? And we want to make sure that the, uh, the hand uh, end effectors now are locked, okay, because we want his hands to stay in position. And let's just bring his hip up a little bit so we can have him uh, up like this, okay? We can even just use the, uh, whoops, control Z to undo that, undo that, undo that, and let's take off the feet effectors right now, okay? Uh, and I'm going to put, going to put stretch mode on. I'm going to stretch his arms up a slight bit, just like this, okay? Whoops, we need to have those effectors on first. There you go. So we'll stretch his arms just a little bit, just like that, okay? And we will rotate our character. We'll kind of bring him forward a little bit like this and rotate him this way, okay? So I kind of want my character to, to just be, um, getting the first momentum from his swing. So we'll do a position like this. Okay, and I'm going to take his legs and kind of just uh, spread them out a little bit. So right here, just like that. There you go. And I'm bring that a little bit further up, actually. And this left leg, left thigh also needs to be rotated up like this. And we'll have that one kind of like this. All right, so this is the uh, the height of his swing. We can even make it further if we want. If he's like a daredevil, we can... Swing even further, just like this, okay? I think that should be okay. All right, so we're going to press F3 again and go into the timeline one more time. And this time we're going to go to frame uh, 10. Okay, and at frame 10, we're just going to have our character basically um, in, the, in the same position he was initially, just kind of like this. Put the hips underneath and rotate him this way. Rotate him 90 degrees first and bring him at the, to this position right here. Again, using that stretch, the stretch uh, bone, okay, to make stretch out those arms a little bit. And we can bring his uh, thighs just uh, like this. Okay, bring him a little kind of closer to the 90 degree angle, just like that. Okay, and we can, uh, um, you know, even rotate those ankles slightly as well, just like this. All right, just so they're normal. And then for the last position, we're going to go to frame 20, okay? And frame 20, we're going to do the opposite. So very similar to the skateboard motion, we're going to take our character's hips and just bring them back like this. Arms stretching out again, like that. And, whoop. There we go. Okay, we'll have him make a big, big swing. Maybe at a 45 degree angle, something like this. Okay. And we'll take those legs and just kind of throw them way back, like this. Okay. Um, almost, so he's almost horizontal. And we'll take those ankles and rotate them further back, just like that. Okay, so we want to really emphasize this swing and make it seem like really, uh, like a really big swing. Okay, just like this, and we'll take the foot and rotate it slightly as well. Okay, so now what we have is we have this. If we uh, click in the uh, timeline, okay, we have this, right? And you know, um, we don't we haven't looped it yet. So uh, what we want to do is we want to loop it by again just uh, clicking on the. Uh, Motion track, okay, and open that transform keyframe. Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and the first frame. Control C to copy, and Control V to paste. At 40 there, and the project length. Keep that to around uh, 50 frames. We'll do, okay, and we'll try something like this. Go ahead and play back. And again, we're going to use transition curves here. So what we want to do for transition curves is as he's kind of moving down to this position, we want to accelerate it, okay? Because he's, you know, dropping, so we want the motion to accelerate. So right-click on that transition keyframe and uh, transition curve, or the transform keyframe, rather. And we're going to use accelerate, okay? So it'll kind of accelerate towards the ground. We can't use something like damping, okay? Unless we want him just kind of stop there. We want to have accelerate, okay? And then as he swings back up, we're just going to have him decelerate, okay? So click this keyframe and decelerate, okay? And again, same thing here, accelerate, and here, decelerate as he approaches his uh, peak there. So what we have now is this. Okay. And our character will just kind of swing back and forth. 
And what we can do is probably just take this uh, project length a little bit further down. We don't want him to be lingering at that uh, height for too long. Okay, so we have this, just like that. Okay. Now, one thing I noticed here is that the frame down here, I think our character, his arms kind of stretch out as he moves this way, but his arms aren't stretched out enough as he moves down to the, the low part here. So I'm going to stretch those out a little bit more. We're going to go to the motion key editor here and just take that and kind of stretch it down because that should be the uh, the lowest point of his uh, of his swing there. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll just uh, copy that keyframe one more time and paste it again on his upswing, and we should have a bit of a better look right here. So there you go. Okay, and you don't have to you don't have to stretch it like that if you don't want to, but I think it kind of looks kind of cool when you're when you're stretching it, and it just uh, adds a bit more of a rhythm to it. And uh, almost like he's just kind of swinging. And it really depends on how smooth or how bouncy you want your swing to be. Again, it can always be adjusted later on by adjusting the uh, hip bone, like I mentioned earlier. Just very simple. Uh, copy and paste again. And there you go. Just have a nice swing like this. All right. Okay, so that's really about all there is to it, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot uh, in this tutorial here. Make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. And I hope to see you in the next video.